effects, but not quite the same. And if you're capturing things close to the borders of your image, you have to be pretty careful so you don't lose any. Getting into some of the more modern stuff. So we've got our little point and shoot camera. This is a mirrorless one. It's a Fujifilm. Don't know if you can see. There you go. You can sort of see me. <laughs> so that's a little Fujifilm X10. I actually won this one in a competition, so I was kind of happy. <laughs> You've got a little baby mirrorless camera. This is a little Olympus. Very, very similar to the Fuji, except that you can take the lens off and put different ones on. Um, just out of interest, we'll cover um, pro glass and amateur glass in, in another session. I think it's actually next week. But these two lenses are essentially the same. One of them's amateur league, that one, and one of them's professional. The professional one, a lot better built, quite a different degree of brightness that you can actually get through this one, but still very, very similar. So there's nothing wrong with using this style. This is my current beast and the one I hope to use for some of the demonstration. Later you might know it's got a cable hanging out the back of it. Um, I want to tether this to show you the differences in some of the lenses. Um, we'll do mostly on lenses next week, but I will touch on them very briefly in here. Max is uh, probably going to be happy at the moment. Do you want to hold yours up, Max? So you can probably see... Yeah, Max's... so he's the, the Theta... Uh... It's a Z1. That's a 360 camera. It's about a thousand US dollars, and this is great for taking street view photography for Google Maps. Yep. And if you want to learn more about that, you'll need to stick around for another week where we're going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of a plug. Yes, indeed, we will be doing a session session on the 360. So this is its little brother. This is the original feeder. And somewhere around here, I've got a Theta V as well. But um, like I said, I don't actually know where that one is right now. I will need to find it. Now, there's one camera that we have. Actually, just, just in the comments, just curious, who here has taken a 360 photo, either with their phone or with a camera? Just write in the comments if you have taken a 360 photo. Just uh, Ollie was pointing out this camera takes a floppy disk, and yes, indeed it does. So who's seen a floppy disk? Who's old enough to have actually seen one? It also takes... This was the... I think this might have actually been the first flash memory. This was called the Sony Magic Gate Flash. Um, this one is... You're going to laugh at this. This is 16 megabytes. <laughs> a whole, and it still works amazingly the original flash had an issue that if you wrote to it more than about 10,000 times it died so um, while I do take that camera out in the occasional photo walk I don't use it much because I don't want to kill the flash because I can't replace it now there's one camera that we haven't talked about yet and it's probably the one that most of you have got so you've all got a phone camera this is probably the most common thing that contributes to maps, whether you've got Android or iOS, or possibly a Windows phone if you're one of those crazy people. Don't think there's many of those left now that they've killed it again. But um, Or you could get into the new Huawei operating system, but we won't go there because it can't run maps. Um, but most of you have probably got one of these. The main difference between the different cameras is what you can do with them. So they all have one thing in common, they all take photos, they all make images, but they have some very subtle differences. The phones tend to have some really, really clever software, and this software is starting to appear in camera bodies now as well. It's often got um, some machine learning, or a lot of people like to call it artificial intelligence, but I do prefer